So our next company presenting here today will be Immunicum and with us on link we have Saime Seilmacher. Uh, I would like to leave the word to you, Saime. Thank you. Thank you, Linus. Yeah, I'm uh, here to tell you a bit about Immunicum in, in 10 minutes. So my name is Saime Seilmacher. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the company. Um, we're, um, we're a public company here in Sweden at the Nasdaq Stockholm, and we focus on, on bringing allogeneic uh, or off-the-shelf cell-based uh, immunotherapies to, to the patient uh, to treat cancer. We do that by quite a unique approach, which I'll tell you about a bit on the, on the next slide in specific. Uh, and this approach has already been tested in a phase two controlled study, so we're quite advanced in, in the, the development stage. Uh, this was in kidney cancer where we showed the typical signs of an immunotherapy, uh, tumors that were eradicated, that were stable for a much longer time, and also the first signs of, of uh, a survival benefit for patients. Um, apart from this phase two study, we've treated actually now over 100 patients in different studies and different tumor types, and also have a very good safety profile in these uh, studies with different combinations. So that really makes it an interesting backbone to different therapeutic combinations in this area. Uh, we also received earlier this year the FDA RMAT designation, which is similar to a breakthrough therapy designation and a designation that the FDA grants to specific approaches that they think are very, very promising and that they can help with their feedback to bring to the market, to the patient uh, much faster. So that, that was very promising for us. We also have an 18 18P certification from the EMA in Europe. Uh, so there's a lot of regulatory input into our development plans. Um, uh, in 2018, we also closed a collaboration with Pfizer and Merck Serono. Uh, that was for the supply of their checkpoint inhibitor for a study that we're currently conducting. Um, so that also shows that the industry is interested in this type of approach. And with the, the feedback from authorities and from the industry, we really hope that we can get this product uh, to the market as, as quick as possible. Now, the cell therapy space is, is, is really a, a booming space. You see all types of next generation approaches being, uh, being developed now and getting into clinical development. And we truly believe that we are in a good position with quite an advanced uh, asset. Uh, the, the cancer space is, of course, something that really, really provides breakthrough opportunities for, for companies like us. And uh, because we still have a good cash balance that, that is funding us uh, to the end of 2021, we feel that we are in a good position now to start looking at expanding the potential of the company. Um, we have a good team in place. I'll tell you something about that at the end. Uh, but recently, we appointed a new CEO to really take us forward in the next phase of the, of the company. Now, quickly on that cell therapy, uh, why we think we are unique is truly because we use uh, cells from a donor, a healthy donor. We make them very inflammatory, so very activated, and these cells we inject into the tumor of a patient. And these cells specifically have a mechanism to start producing these inflammatory molecules, cytokines and chemokines, and that breaks through the suppressive environment of the tumor. The tumor is trying everything it can to keep the immune system uh, at, at a distance. And we are trying to break through that system by injecting these cells directly in the tumor of a patient, and that creates an immune response from the patient's own immune cells into that tissue, they start recognizing the cancer cells and creating a systemic uh, immune response that not only attacks the cells that are in the injected tissue, but also, for example, metastatic lesions and other places, which is exactly the, pro the problem with uh, advanced cancer at, the, at this uh, stage. So we only inject one lesion of a patient, but we create a systemic response. And there we want to combine with agents that can further help boost the immune response and attack every cancer cell in the body. Now, if we look at the landscape of vaccines and immune primers, a lot has been done on the left with, with let's say, these autologous uh, vaccines uh, from the patient's own cells that use uh, tumor-associated antigens, so not tumor-specific antigens. Um, the, 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 there was a lot of promise in these vaccines, but the choice of antigens was not specific enough to create a potent immune response. Uh, and the autologous cells were not potent enough for the patient to still get a, a good immune response against those. So the, 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 the idea was good, but the, 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 the outcome was not, not good enough. If we look at the, uh, the neoantigen space, there's sort of 
tumor-specific antigens for that patient. Um, we see now BioNTech, the one also developing the COVID vaccine, and Gridstone in the US doing a lot of work in producing a vaccine per patient, which is very promising, but that will always have the issue of having a product per patient. Um, and that has, of course, a lot of resource, resource implications. Now, we are using the tumor as the source of these new antigens, injecting something in the patient's own tumor tissue and creating, therefore, a tumor-specific uh, immune response. If you look at that, the space is more comparable to uh, TOL-like receptor ligands or sting ligands, oncolytic viruses, and, and the cytokines like IL-12 being injected in the tumor. All of these approaches are interesting, but they have a very limited mechanism of action. They only produce one cytokine or one inflammatory molecule and don't create this whole space to change the environment of the tumor and create a, a potent immune response. So we are using a more complex cell therapy to accomplish that, but we also have a more complex and complete mechanism of action. And we can test that in, in, in preclinical models. So, uh, so in, in, in this case, it was an animal model that is resistant to checkpoint inhibitors, a very potent immunotherapy in human uh, nowadays. And if we add elixir cell on top of that P1 checkpoint inhibitor, we start seeing this tumor inhibition. So the growth was being reduced. Um, CTLA-4 is another type of checkpoint inhibitor that is very interesting, but on its own can only reduce the growth of the tumor and, and not eradicate it. And if we added elixir and cell on top of this CTLA-4 checkpoint inhibitor, we actually were able to induce 70% of the animals uh, into a complete response, a complete removal of the tumor, uh, and could even re-challenge them with tumor, and still the tumor could not grow back. And that's exactly what you want to see for an immunotherapy. So we, we are looking at the standard of care, but also new therapies to, to combine with. And I think that is reflected in our pipeline. We have started in, in kidney cancer um, and, and combining with the standard of care kinase inhibitors in this case. Uh, but we also now have a, a phase one ongoing with checkpoint inhibitors. And we're also looking at how to further expand this so that elixir and cell and immunocum can really become part of the, uh, the cancer landscape. If you look at the phase two that we've just completed, uh, the initial uh, readout was, of course, on response and, and survival, and we now follow patients still for survival. The latest survival results we had in August, which, which really showed that the longer we follow patients, the, the more you see this divergence in the survival path of, uh, of, of patients, and the combination of elixir and cell on top of the standard of care induces uh, a better survival uh, for especially the patients that are responding. If you look at those responses, we can see that there's a higher confirmed response rate, so tumors that are responding for a more uh, longer duration, uh, and also more patients having a complete response, so complete eradication of their um, the tumor that they had. And that, to us, is really what you want to see as an immunotherapy. Another study that is still ongoing is the uh, phase 1b Iliad study. So this is with checkpoint inhibitors. In the phase 1 part, we combine with pembrolizumab or Keytruda. And then in the phase 2, we want to move forward with the uh, checkpoint inhibitor from Merck and from Pfizer. Um, we, we recently announced in October that we've completed uh, the, the, the next safety update, which showed a very favorable combination, as we would expect. And also the recruitment is now really picking up. So we hope to have the, uh, the full dosing and, and, and safety results uh, towards the second half of 21, where we have followed patients for a, a sufficient imaging period. Now, building on uh, this, this uh, phase two proof of concept that we have in kidney cancer, we have, of course, a study ongoing with checkpoint inhibitors that is the, the market leader in this, uh, in this space. Um, we want to continue with a kinase inhibitor like sunitinib, but then move that into a smaller indication like sarcoma or GIST, where we have some clinical experience, because there we can really find the path to the market in the quickest and most uh, efficient way. Um, but next to that, we also want to pursue the breakthrough potential of the CTLA-4 combination, where we have very promising preclinical results and, of course, very good uh, ongoing studies now with PD-1 uh, checkpoint inhibitor. So that's another pillar that we uh, 
that we prioritize. And beyond that, having now the biology proven of, of dendritic cells, we look forward to further expanding our pipeline where we look at other dendritic cell approaches uh, and K cell approaches and T cell approaches that are similar to our mechanism of action. Because based on the data we now have in hand, it, it, it really is time to start expanding this potential. Now, quickly on what you can expect from us in the coming uh, coming months, we have the phase one ongoing with the checkpoint inhibitors. So we're pro expecting the last patient enrolled probably happens sometime during Q1, uh, and then we start continue following patients for an imaging period for efficacy uh, towards the second half of uh, 2021. Um, and during this time, you can also expect more updates to come from our strategy, uh, looking at these different pillars of opportunity. Now, I'll take this, this as the last slide of the presentation. Uh, as I said, we already have a team in place for a number of years now uh, when it comes to the R&D part of the, the, the company. And of course, Alex Carlson Parra as the founder of the company and, the, and the, the scientist and inventor of the technology. But recently we added Sven Roman as the CEO. Now, Sven has a lot of experience when it comes to pharma and it comes to the, the, his medicine background, but also bringing companies like ourselves, uh, biotech companies, to the stage of commercialization. And that's really the next phase of development for Immunicum. So uh, I think uh, the line is we can uh, we can keep it at, uh, at that. Uh, I'll take any questions you uh, already had in mind. Thank you for that, and thank you for your presentation. I would like to start off with the question, uh, why was it important to come up with an updated uh, business and clinical development uh, strategies? Absolutely. So, so first of all, we had, of course, an important update last year with the phase two. Um, a phase two that, that really proved uh, the, the, the effect of elixir cell on top of the standard of care. But we also knew that the standard of care in kidney care, cancer has changed. So how to best use this data when you look at the market? Because that's the end goal, to get this to the patient. And when we have to move this forward in kidney cancer, we are dependent on finding a partner to do that with us. Um, and, and of course, that's still part of the priority uh, in our third pillar. Uh, but if you look at the priority of the company now is to see, okay, how can we best move this combination forward with the data we have? And therefore, um, we wanted to give an update already to the market that we are going to explore a path forward in, in, in GIST and sarcomas, where we can continue with the same combination we had in phase two. Um, while we are pursuing partnering opportunities like the RCC indication, uh, the Iliad study that is ongoing with checkpoint inhibitors where we already have a collaboration in place. And then of course, also looking at pipelines. So we wanted to already share this update with our shareholders that they can expect updates on these different fronts in the months to come. And of course, we will come back to the market when we have a, a specific plan of development in each of these uh, pillars. Hmm. Um have the new strategies affected Immunicum's uh, short uh, and long-term goals? And if so, how? I think the short-term goal is still uh, that, of course, we have the Iliad study ongoing with checkpoint inhibitors. That is the study that will deliver the next value inflection points when it comes to clinical data. Um, we've always said that next to the phase two in kidney cancer, the checkpoint inhibitor data is very important because that data we can use to further pursue other types of combinations. Um, so that is still the near term goal. We have Iliad ongoing, it's, it's recruiting according to plan, and we hope to deliver data to the public uh, during 2021. Now, in parallel to that, we will be focusing on the long term plan. And the long term plan, as I said, is, is how to get this cell therapy to the market. And we have identified uh, a smaller indication like GIST as an opportunity to get them to the market. And, and you can expect an update from us uh, with, with a real development plan of allowing that in the months to come. But um, as I said, we're currently preparing, preparing those next steps. Mm. Uh, how is Elix Cell uh, different from other immune oncology uh, approaches, would you say? Yeah, I think, uh, of course, I have one slide when it comes to the landscape of, of our direct comparators, so vaccines and immune primers that often have a more limited uh, scope. If we talk about the entire cancer landscape, it's really important to realize that immune primers are really there to start the engine of the immune 
response. So if you have an immune response, you can further boost that with checkpoint inhibitors, with other types of anti-cancer agents. But if you if your immune response is not properly activated, it's very difficult to activate and help the immune system to to attack the cancer. So that's why we feel that you know it's okay to push the gas and release the brake uh, when it comes to the the immune response. But you have to start the engine first of the immune response, and that's where we as an immune primer come in. And that's why I think any type of combination can benefit from a more potent immune system against the cancer. Yeah. Thank you for your uh, presentation and your time. Um, we look forward to following Immunicum, um, and we will be back shortly. Thank you.